15, 1963, the Mercury capsule Faith 7 rests atop the Hughes missile on Pad 14 at Cape Canaveral. It's a perfect day as Major Gordon Cooper leaves Hangar S to embark on the most ambitious space flight yet undertaken by the United States. With a portable air conditioner in one hand, Major Cooper receives good wishes with the other. Good wishes and silent prayers for his mission that aims at 22 orbits, a day and a half in space for the Major. Then up to the 11th floor platform to the ready room. Where he enters the 4,000 pound Faith 7, named by Cooper in acknowledgement of his faith in God and country. The clocks approach 9.04 a.m. The countdown proceeds without a hitch. The world watches and waits. Then ignition and blast off. The 25-foot spacecraft and Atlas rocket rise perfectly, straight up with its thunderous roar spreading over the Cape. Around the world, millions follow every moment of takeoff as the Faith 7 goes successfully into orbit at 17,500 miles per hour, reaching a high point of 165 miles and a low of 100 miles. No orbital flight has ever started smoother, and Major Cooper prepares to perform more scientific experiments over a longer period than any other American astronaut. A mission that is a giant milestone on the road to the moon. Cooper's flight was perfect for the first 27 hours, during which he slept for almost eight hours. He was on his 19th orbit when Earthlings learned that he would have to bring his craft back to Earth manually. Only his skill and training would land him safely. The Navy had ships stationed around the world for any emergency, with the Kearsarge patrolling the prime target area. Over Red China, Cooper fires his retro rockets to slow his re-entry. He was guided by Colonel John Glenn aboard a ship near Japan. He fired his rockets on the split second, and then he prepares to let go his rocket bank and guide his Faith 7 to splashdown. Cooper had faced such emergencies in training, and he played it calm. At no time in the short history of space flight had there been such a performance. Cooper's target area is 115 miles southeast of Midway Island. He couldn't be closer than this, and when the drogue parachute opens, he knew he was home. The pilot chute sets up a drag and pulls out the landing chute. He's nearing the end of a 600,000 mile saga, two and a half times the distance to the moon. The crew of the carrier Kearsarge goes into action as visual contact is made. Helicopters carry frogmen to the very spot where he will land. Here's the landing. In the left center background, you can see the main chute as Major Cooper returns to Earth 22 orbits and 34 hours after blast off from Cape Canaveral. Cooper landed his capsule just 7,000 yards from the Kearsarge. An astonishing achievement that will go down in the annals of space flight. Recovery efforts proceed like clockwork. Frogmen are lowered from the helicopter and they attach a flotation collar that keeps the capsule afloat. Major Cooper elected to stay in his craft until it was safe on the carrier's deck. The capsule door is blown off and Cooper's flight officially ends. A flight that exceeded the most optimistic predictions. The Major emerges to the cheers of the crew and plaudits around the world.
In the ship's hospital, the doctors gather data that will prove invaluable in future space flights. The medical team pronounces Cooper physically fit. Fit to face the more strenuous trip ahead. Hawaii, back on U.S. soil for the first time since takeoff. His wife and daughters are on hand to greet him. What more appropriate than this typical Hawaiian welcome? Hawaii adopts the Major as a native son, and the first of many welcoming parades he faces takes him through Honolulu. A roaring hello and aloha for the Major in the 50th state. Next stop, Cape Canaveral. Then the triumphal return to the scene of his takeoff. He lands at Patrick Air Force Base near the Cape. It's an enthusiastic, good work coup that greets the astronaut. The people at the Cape speak for the people of the world as they cheer the nation's newest space hero. In Washington, President Kennedy awards Major Cooper the Space Agency's medal. So Major, we're glad to welcome you and your mother here, and your wife, your two children, and to tell you that uh, you've given the United States a, a great day and a great lift. I didn't really have much to say, and after that, all I can say is that it certainly is a great honor to be invited here and to be presented this award, and thank you all very much. Then an uproarious welcome as he rides the glory road down Pennsylvania Avenue to the Capitol to address a joint session of Congress. Major Cooper receives a thunderous standing ovation. The astronaut paid tribute to all who made his flight possible. More than four million New Yorkers line the streets to cheer the major. His roaring reception comes on the 36th anniversary of Lindbergh's flight to Paris, the greatest aviation feat of its day. The tributes and honors were accepted by Cooper in the name of the astronaut team. Mayor Wagner presents New York's Medal of Honor, Major Gordon Cooper, newest U.S. space hero.